Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. There are so, so, so many iOS email apps. I know, and you tested them all, you poor person. I, however, have focused like a laser beam, thanks to our app cap of the week. Also, donuts, holes, and trash pandas. <laughs> it's all next on iOS Today. iOS Today is brought to you by Tres Pontas. Freshly roasted gourmet coffee shipped directly to you. Visit trespontas.com slash iOS and use the code iOS to save 20% on every bag of coffee in your subscription. And by Qualcomm Snapdragon. According to Ookla, Android smartphones with Snapdragon 845 from Qualcomm had faster data speeds on AT&T and T-Mobile than non-Android phones with Intel modems based on over a million real-world tests done in Q2 2018. See all the data for yourself at qualcom.com slash twit. Trash pandas? Wow. A.K.A. raccoons. Ah, ha, ha, ha. iOS Today. I learned something uh, the other day. Did you now? I, I watched our show. Oh, good, good. <laughs> First time in a long time. Kevin leaves in the things we say oh. underneath the da, 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 da. Does he? You do, don't you, Kevin? Yes. Naughty boy. I didn't know that. So I've been saying all sorts of rude and unfortunate things <laughs> underneath because I thought, oh, you know. Right. I'm silent now, mm -hmm. but I'm not. Right. Because you never say rude or unfortunate things. In public. No, never. <laughs> Hello, Megan Maroney. Hello, Leo Laporte. This is the show where Megan... Beats me up, and I kind of hit on her, and it's really <laughs> uncomfortable of. for everybody. And we call it iOS today. We do. Actually, we do. this is no, we no. love each other, and we just tease each other because we we've do. known each other for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. That's the amazing thing. This is the show where we cover the uh, iPad, the iPhone, the Apple Watch. And the Apple TV, mm -hmm. all iOS devices. And today we're going to talk about email apps. But before we get to that, I wanted to bring something up. Yeah. Something I've been thinking about mm. um, that's only tangentially related to iOS. Okay, do you you know when I was growing up, probably not when you were growing up. I don't when, know when you were growing when up. When I was growing up, we were taught as uh, young women and ladies to um, make sure that you didn't depend on a male partner, financially speaking. No, that was different when I was growing up. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you know, just that you were stable and you had your own yeah, income just in case. I right. am woman, hear me roar. And I have done that. But I have been thinking about the fact um, that women aren't necessarily taught to be stable in their technology knowledge also. Like I hear from a lot of women who are like, oh, my husband does that. Oh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how the um, this works. I don't know how that mm -hmm. works. I don't know how that works. Maybe technology has taken the place of cars because that, was, the, that yes. was kind of the sexist attitude. And I don't think it's really right. I think that, uh, in fact, I'll be honest with you, I get just as many men who say, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> as I, at least. But they don't say, oh, I let my wife do that. They just say, I don't know what to Right, do. exactly. Technology is complicated. But, yeah. and I think that, I know that Don't we, depend on your hubby for this. Yes, and I know Me? we have a lot of women that watch the show, but we have a lot of men that watch the show. If you have a female partner, um, just encourage her. Just, just say, you do it, lady. I mean, because I think that, you know, the me I'm not saying, you know, you know, make sure your your wife knows about technology before you divorce her or anything, but you <laughs> might not be around. And so it's important to make sure that you're not taking yeah, control actually, of all of the technology, all the passwords and everything. Yeah, that's an excellent point because uh, it's not a problem with our family with passwords because we use LastPass and we share. And that's, by the way, they're sponsored, but that's not why I'm saying it. It's just that uh, you have family passwords and mm -hmm. you share it. And, the, and actually, that's one of the things I like about LastPass is what they call emergency access, where you can designate your spouse or somebody else. I use my spouse and Abby, my daughter. If something should happen to me, they would have access to those accounts. Because mm -hmm. that's important. If they don't have access to your bank account and stuff, it's hard to settle your estate if everything's locked up with no access. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, I think we're covered. But there is another respect we're not. And Lisa always mentions this to me. She says, when you die, it's going to be hard for me to watch TV. <laughs> At first, I thought that was because she'd be sad, but no. She it's doesn't know how to work the TV? There are eight remotes, and the order is significant. 
Yes. And um, yeah, it's it's unnecessarily complicated. Yes, yeah. So Loquacious in the chat room says, how about we don't depend on anyone else for tech support regardless of whether you're married to them or not? Yeah, well, that's clearly that's the, the way it should be. Mm -hmm. But it's not often. And uh, and the other thing that I should say to, it, in respect of this is it's not unusual for couples, it doesn't, not necessarily married, but just couples of any kind, for them to take roles. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I, I do the dishes, you do the trash. I cook, you clean. Whatever it is, because you don't want to duplicate efforts. So in any any group, people take roles. Here at work, we all have roles. I don't do any editing anymore. Mm -hmm. Is that me being uh, dependent on Kevin? Well, yes. But well, it doesn't you mean... you needed to edit your own shows, then... I know how to. I used to know how to. I mm -hmm. probably don't know how to anymore. <laughs> but, but, but so that... I don't think that's... So if you take it away, take away the sexist connotations of it, it is normal in any group to take roles. And so, uh, you know, Lisa doesn't like to f put gas in the car. So I bought an electric vehicle. Smart. Mm -hmm. Solved that problem right away. Mm -hmm. No, but when we had gas vehicles, she, she said, whenever possible, you should be the one to fill the car up. And I think that's completely normal. Yeah. Right? But you're right. There is a certain sexist tinge to it because I think it is probably often women that say, well, my husband takes care of that. But everybody should know. And this is what we, this is actually the whole reason to it. And everything I do exists because I believe everybody should understand technology as well as they can so they can use it to their advantage. Exactly. So thank, thank I just wanted to take a little um. You're really little saying tangent. thank you to me. Thank you to you. <laughs> thank you for everything. Thank you for my job. Thank you for everything. The end. <laughs> All right, email app. You should thank me because next month I'm going to be buying you a lot of expensive stuff. Thank you in advance for that. And I'm talking diamonds. <laughs> Uh, Diamond encrusted iPhone. Yeah, lots of lots of. Oh man, it's gonna be expensive in September. But we'll talk about that later okay. in the news. Let's talk about email. You okay. did a lot of work. I, I did. couldn't believe it. What was it? Six uh, apps? You tried I out? tried like I ended up trying. I think um, probably twelve. Holy cow! And it gets overwhelming. This came as a suggestion from Matt, who wrote in and said he had taken our suggestion of using the Newton email app, which was formerly Cloud Magic. Love it, yeah. Um, he, said it was, he said it was shutting down, which is true, in Bummer. September. Bummer. Um, and he says, I do IT consulting, and as a part of it, sometimes I have multiple email accounts that I have to check due to client requirements, flipping between webmail results and in results in lost and forgotten and unchecked emails, but a unified email inbox leads me to being on top of everything. What I liked about Newton was all my accounts funneled to one place. It works on iOS, it works on Android, it works on my Mac, and it works on my PC. That said, for day-to-day -day work, I use both a Surface and a MacBook Pro, and I have an iPhone and an iPad, but to test out the latest Pixel phones and Samsung phones when they come out, I need a mail program that will let me have a unified inbox, swipe to snooze later in the day, that evening, next day, next week or month, and Jeez snooze Louise. to the mobile desktop. Can I just say one thing before yes. you launch into all the alternatives? This is an unusual case because usually when the computer comes with a built-in program to do something, very few third-party developers will step up and say, oh, we can do one, right? Mm -hmm. Because everybody just assumes, well, it comes with mail. Nobody's going to need a third-party mail. And oddly enough, and I have tried many of the ones you're about to look at, I still use the built-in mail app. You do? <laughs> I know, I'm a savage. It does many of the things he just described, the swipe if you want to snooze it or well, archive it. You can't snooze with mail on Apple. Well, Try to snooze. Go ahead. You can't Try snooze, to snooze. But you can, uh, if I do more. Uh, You're not a snoozer. I can, I can mark it. <laughs> I can say notify me, right? I can, I can, well, that's when somebody replies. But I mean, there's things I can do. And I, usually what I do instead of snooze is flag. So I say, well, keep that in a box of flagged mail. There's a special folder of flagged mail because I'm going to look at that later. But you're right. For people who want all of this supreme organization, Apple Apple's built-in mail app doesn't do a lot. On the other hand, it does one thing that most of the, I bet none of the ones that you're uh, doing, looking at will do. What's that? Uh, I like to sign my mail. Do you oh, know what that is? Like PGP signature? Yeah, uh, cryptographically sign the mail, cryptographically sign the mail. That has two benefits. One, you know it came from me if it's if it's a genuine signature, and I'll tell you how you can validate that. And two, that it was unmodified so that somebody didn't intercept. Because, you know, mail just goes in the clear over all these servers. Somebody could stop it, say, let's add a line. I am going to send you $1,000 right now, and then send it on. So... 
that cryptographic signature ensures it hasn't been modified and I send it. And if you have the proper program, you can verify it. You'll When you open the mail, it'll say, oh, yeah, Leo signed this. Now, Apple Mail doesn't, unfortunately, support PGP on, on iOS, but it does support uh, maybe a, a simpler technology uh, called S-MIME. It's a certificate uh, signing certificate. And you can buy a certificate from many, many emails. Just Google email certificate. There's I probably free ones, but I buy one uh, from, I can't remember who now. But I uh, buy one once a year. I spend 50 bucks. It They verify your identity. That certificate then goes out with the mail. And if somebody cares to, they can verify that the mail came from you. And Apple Mail uh, supports that. Gmail doesn't do that? Nobody else does that. Mm -hmm. uh, that I know of. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there are third-party email programs that do. But Outlook? I, but, no. Oh. So it, on desktop, that's easy. A lot, most, a lot of them do. Mm hmm in fact, desktop, they support PGP. Apple Mail supports mm -hmm. PGP. But I, it's on iOS that it's hard. And it's a little tricky. You have to sign up for the uh, certificate. They mail it to you. You have to open it in Apple Mail, install it, and then you have to tell Apple Mail in the settings, use this certificate to sign the mail. But once you do that, that to me is fairly important because I don't want, uh, you know, I don't want people impersonating my email, right? And so you are demonstrating so the most important thing about this with saying it's important to me. That's the most important thing to you. Exactly. Everybody has different needs. I could care less about S-MIME or PGP. <laughs> no one's going to spoof me. <laughs> I'm not a spy. So the important, most important thing to me is snoozing and smart replies. <laughs> You're so smart. And so because as I demonstrated on Twitter this weekend, um, starting, I told, I said on Twitter, I'm starting a pod, new podcast. It's going to be called Tell Leo. And it's all the things that people email me saying, tell Leo, tell Leo <laughs> to do sorry. this, tell Leo he Lisa got this gets, wrong. Lisa so, gets those mails too. She's going to be my co-host, I think. Because <laughs> um, they know I don't care. Right. Don't and anything. she, I, I mean, I think it's better off because like I just, you know, she has to decide. That's, that's basically we're both triaging our email it, and our minds. How important is it, it really for bugs, us to tell him it this? It bugs Lisa to no end. And, you know, I it's my fault. Sometimes I'll say on this show, don't email him. Email me. You can email me. I read my email. Yes, but you don't. You don't uh, triage your email. <laughs> no, I don't. You don't spend thirty minutes a day. I hate on email. Your email. No. Um, and so, to me, email's a productivity killer. Well, do you? Unless, I bet you do this. You check your email. You like you're sitting there every five minutes. You go check my email. Check my email. No, I don't. Do I that. check it maybe once a day. Maybe, often not. And by the way, that really peeves people. I know. Because if I don't respond within a minute or even an hour or even a day, they say, oh, well, but I don't check. I don't. I think it's bad for productivity to check your email. I often. think it is, too. I don't check it all oh, good. day long. Oh, good. I, but I do dedicate probably the first 30 minutes of my work day. Oh, you have email day. time. Yes. Yeah. I dedicate it. And I that's smart. snoozing is important. You can't flag it like you're saying, because then it's still there mucking up the waters. I still see it. I have to snooze it. And so it's important. I'm going to get this done to the end. At the end of the day, I'm going to snooze it till the end of the day. I'm going to snooze it. Those are tomorrow. to do. Those are to do features, yeah. really. And email is in a way your to do list. It's a lot of things. It's a database of everybody you've talked to agreements you've made to do list. Mm -hmm. Right. So so, and then the smart that. replies are the ones I really like that too. Sometimes, a, you know, an email just reply needs a yes or a no, or I'll do that, or I can't make it. If I it, used or... Gmail, I would use the uh, mm -hmm. Gmail smart replies. A lot of them have smart replies. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Not, not just, just Gmail? Not just Not Gmail. just inbox? <gasps> not just inbox. Oh, they're, show me. They're getting it. Okay. So let's. Um, Maybe, you know what? I am the guinea pig. I and Matt, I want to know the answer to this too. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I have, okay. So let's start with airmail. And now I like this one. I um, think this is pretty. Airmail is um, I use this on my Mac, and I use it on uh, my iPad. And that's my important iPhone. too. It's nice to use one program that's the same on all your platforms. Mm -hmm. And so, as much as I like the idea of going to this um, disrupt meeting, transforming digital payments, blockchain in Africa, <laughs> I think you should uh, you should snooze that. I'm. I'm going to snooze it. No, I would delete it. Would you? Yeah. Because maybe no. in the future, uh -uh. Nope. I might want to mm -mm. do a story on Never blockchain going. in Africa. Nope. I'm not going to this meeting, but I might want this contact. Maybe Cellulent That's true. just giving them the press that they needed. Uh, so yeah, just email me if you no, want No, actually, it. but that's a good point. Why? It, it, storage is cheap. Mm -hmm. Keep it all. Yeah. In case you need it. So do I think I'm ever going to really no, um, you're not going. want this... 
yet. Yeah, I don't. So maybe. So don't snooze it. Maybe no, archive it. Archive it. So oh. then I'm like, oh, I'm looking for a contact for blockchain in Africa. Yeah. And then archive I can it. just. Then you um, don't see it. It's not in your inbox. It's somewhere, but it can still be searched. Right. And I don't even know where this email is that's showing up now. It's down here somewhere. There it is. There it is. Okay. So um, I can do all kinds of things. Um, I can archive it, which is what I'm going to do. By the do. way, I can do that on Apple Mail. Yes, yes, you can do that on Either Apple way. Mail, okay. but you can't do that you can't snooze if it. I wanted to snooze it. But archive snooze, archive snooze, so, I'm going to archive it. See, I think snoozing, <laughs> I'm not a busy person. Maybe that's the reason. Snoozing is just, you know, pe kicking the can down the road. Right. Well, so let, I do that a lot with questions that I get on the show. I'll oh, get a yeah, question. Oh, yeah, because you're saving them for- Yeah, and I'm going to snooze it until, like, you know- See, I use, the, so this is a different philosophically, but I use filters for that and folders. And Lisa's also a folder person. Do you have a lot of folders? No. Because if you had folders questions for iOS today, you could just drag it over to that folder. I could, but, I mean, there are some email <laughs> she apps- made a face you missed that was just dis just dismissive. Well, I could. Folders to me are productivity. Um, oh, interesting. I like folders. Because I just think spending the time, why put things in folders? You're wasting time when you can just, or well, you can just search. Well, most of my folders are handled automatically by my email server, which searches through stuff and it says, for instance, you know, I get a lot of notices from my bank. You're out of money. Your <laughs> checks are bouncing. Stuff hey, like that. I don't want to see those. So those automatically go into a finance folder. And then if I want to check it, I can, but I don't actually ever see those. Um, so that's the kind of thing I like to do. And I can do, you can do that with filtering, right? Yeah, you could. Does Apple Mail How often do you filtering? look at your, those folders, Leo? Rarely, but that's the point. <laughs> you know, I, I've mentioned this before and it's my favorite tip is I, I look for the word unsubscribe in the body of a message. And if mm -hmm. I see that, that goes in the newsletter folder. Right. I can then go look at my newsletters mm -hmm. when I'm in the mood to read junk, but I don't have to. Yeah. Out that of sight, out sense. of mind. Um, so... Okay, good. So we have one thing, which is archive. Right. This is and, airmail. Yes, we can archive. The, the airmail doesn't have smart replies. Mm. Um, but so, mm. yeah, um, there's, here's this question that we're going to answer today from Alan. Um, and I snoozed it, you see, until today. And what That's is one way to do it. Yeah, you say, have all those mails pop up the day I need them. Right. Sorry yeah. for showing your email address, Alan. We'll delete that later. <laughs> we'll, we'll fuzz that in the post. <laughs> with, with my hand, I made it. You harder. may notice that a lot of the show these days is blurry. <laughs> you may notice that. <laughs> That's because I keep showing phone numbers. Yeah, there we go. Just black it out. Mm -hmm. Phone numbers, credit card numbers. If you're listening, you're safe. In fact, let's just stop doing video entirely. Yeah, we c I would be happy to do that. Um, what? <laughs> no, no, turn it back on. Thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, so um, I shaved today. You better do video. <laughs> I was debating that. You know, we're going. I'm going on vacation for a couple of weeks, three weeks. I could grow a beard, probably. Never tried in that time. Mm -hmm. I almost didn't shave today, thinking maybe this is it. Maybe this is the, the moment. Then I decided not to. You did. You couldn't do it. Um, Airmail lets you turn uh, emails into PDFs if you need that. You know how I decided that. <laughs> How did how did you decide that? I thought, did William F. Buckley ever shave? Mm, and did he? I mean, ever grow a beard? No. So, W, 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 What would William F. F. Buckley D. do? W, 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 F, D. Oh, because he was on TV a long time. And you F. knew what he, you know what his face looked like. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that David Letterman thing where he looks like a caveman. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what were you saying? I was saying airmail <laughs> would allow you to turn uh, an email into a PDF. Oh. Arguably what you said was more important. But. No, actually, that's interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and what's the use case for that? Um, that's a good question. I'll give you one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you write to a company saying, I don't know how to do this. And you make a PDF because it's like part of the manual. You put it in with a manual. Mm. Mm. Uh, I'll good. tell you where I do PDFs a lot, actually, is uh, travel plans. Mm. You know, we get this confirmation mm -hmm. from the hotel, confirmation from the airline. I'll PDF that, and then I'll put it in DevonSync. And the reason I do the PDF instead of just putting the email in there is it can't be edited, right? So I can't accidentally change a date or time by you know by accident and be confused. So that's a so it's kind of like locking down the content. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, smart replies I use I when I really that. want to use smart replies. That's Edison. 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 And you've heard of Edison recently because everyone said you know 
It came out that Edison was reading your email, and that's how they can do the smart replies by oh, reading your email. But of course, right? <laughs> yeah, that is one thing to keep in mind. A smart mm -hmm. reply requires right now. It could be that Edison is reading your email locally. That's what Apple would do, right? Mm -hmm. And reply to the email from just what it can see. Are they sending it back to the big Edison servers yeah. in the sky? That's. I mean, that's something you got to look at. All of the read the. The privacy policy. I read it. I'm fine with it. You know, there is a hint that Edison might be doing that. You see the price? Free, yes. Airmail, which I talked about before, was $4.99. Not free. When something's free, eh, if they're getting some way to make some money out of that sucker. Mm hmm So, okay, here's, uh, here's a smart reply. So here's, I got this uh, email from Lewis. Um or Louie, perhaps, about the Go chair. I do not know why. I'm on this, this is the know-how email list. What is a Go chair? It's a chair. Is it a chair in the sky? <laughs> it's uh, Oh, the he's perfect, holding it up. It's so it's light. It's the perfect low-profile, lightweight chair for no, camping, no. the beach, um, concerts. Yeah. This is, this, you know, I'm getting a lot of email from the know-how list. Apparently, Brian, when he worked here, subscribed to everything because he's such a nice guy. He probably gave out the email address to everyone he met yeah, anywhere. Yeah, that's um, okay. Because you don't mind because you're going to put it in archive and then someday if you ever need a go chair. Right, exactly. Or maybe today's I need a, the day I need a go chair. So here's the smart replies. Can you see that? I'm interested. Oh. What's the price? Oh, wow, well, that's pretty smart. now, maybe later. That's pretty smart. So let's see... Um, that it didn't give me one. It didn't give me smart replies for this one. Let's see if it gave me smart reply. Oh, I have to. I'd like reply. to know what smart replies uh, oh, it, it gives didn't. you when I send you email. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> How smart send is it? Email, <laughs> send, send me an email, Megan at Twit.tv, and we'll send me an email, Megan at Twit.tv. Ask a really complicated question. Okay. We'll see. Okay, and you can you'll see that it's signed mm -hmm. too, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see if another one that um, I would get some. Uh, here's Thomas. He wrote me and he said that um, there's a bright green line that's running down the screen of his phone on the right side. You happen to know if there's a quick fix or do I need to make a genius bar appointment? And I could say, yes, I do. No, I don't. And I don't. Sorry. It wouldn't be great if it had the solution to Thomas's problem there. If it said the bright green line sounds like you need to make an appointment for a genius bar. Now, that would be a really smart reply. While we're here, do you know what to do if Thomas has a bright green line that's running down the screen of his phone? Yeah. On the right side? The new phone. Good news. Okay. New phone's out next week. Oh. Or two weeks. Or okay. Did maybe you send three me, weeks. Are you, you're still working on, <laughs> yeah. on sending me an email. Yeah. Um, I'll, and I'll send it right now. Edison has all the features that I like. I'm not going to probably experience instant stress reduction at TechCrunch. So I could snooze it there or I could mark it as unread. I could archive it that way. Um and yeah, by so the way, I should point out that Apple's mail again on iOS said, I don't have a key to encrypt this email to oh, Megan. Oh. If I had a key, a certificate for you, it would have actually allowed me to send private email oh. to Megan that no one else would have been able to see. Again, a nice feature nobody needs. Okay, so we got Except the email. Spies. Okay. Um, so let's see what the uh, auto response I is. I need hot dog buns, and I think you might be grocery shopping Saturday. Can you pick some up for me? Let's, I mean, that's a reasonable That email. is a reasonable request. Why yeah. didn't it give me any smart replies? Well, reply to it first. Hmm, it's no, not so they usually smart, is appear it? there. You know why? Uh, I think is the smart replies are designed around commercial email. Oh, I'll buy that. What's the price? <laughs> send, me, send me more information about your fine product. Well, I don't know. Let's not helpful see. if it's not giving me replies that have to do with my, uh, okay. I'm I'm crossing Edison off the. Oh, what's what are those smart replies? Uh, this is another pitch for TechCrunch. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks for the mail. Thank you for the information. Not now, maybe later. Okay, so Gmail and the inbox would have given you, I think, smart replies to yeah. that particular email saying, "Yes, I'll be glad to." No, I don't know what I'm doing on Saturday. Something like that. And that's why I put a day in because I thought maybe it would also say, you know, make an appointment with Leo on Saturday. Something like that. This is not that smart. In fact, I'm. Let's what, see. What if you? What if it's because it's signed and they can't read it because they because it's s mimed or whatever? <laughs> no, it doesn't change. The okay, body Gardner of the just sent me an email. Look, Gardner says, okay. Megan, "Megan, I heard that you might need an email that you could auto reply to. Is that yes. correct? Yes, that's correct. No, I didn't. I don't understand. Ah, 
what so he you mean. asked a question. Maybe I should do a question. You sure it's not because you are you signed it in your S Mimey P7S whatever? <laughs> no. That's the, by the way, that P7S, that's a certificate. And if you weren't using Edison Mail, you would then be able to verify that that's from me. Okay. That's what that is. That's the yes mark. But you asked a question too. Can you pick some up for me? But did I put a question mark on yes, it? Yes, you did. Uh, Why? Maybe I didn't ask the right kind of question. I'm going to reply. Yes, that's correct, Gardner. Thank you. Why is the sky blue? Question mark. Message is unencrypted, it says, see? Okay. Because I can't find a certificate for you. If I added your certificate, we'd be able to have private email. And I think it's a very fast and easy way to do it. Okay. Now let's see when now, that comes in. Let's if, see if it offers greetings. <laughs> Edison. Okay. Why is the sky hey, both blue? Both of us got email from Norway. It didn't do it again. Is it your signature? Is it what if they what if when it sees a PGP it doesn't read it because it just says I could take the signature off mm -hmm. if you want. No, I don't. By the way, it's okay. You don't have to blur out my phone number on that signature. Oh. No, no. It's okay. No, it's okay. Is it that's your signature? You send it to I send everybody. it to everybody who emails me, gets my phone number. And then the way I handle that is I never answer my phone. Yeah, that's that's smart. Call me if you need to. I'm just kidding. Don't call me. Don't, Say, would you please tell number. Leo? Um, a lot of Am people. Am I smart or what? I, I used Outlook for a while. You can customize your swipes. It has a built-in calendar. That's a feature. It works with Google Drive. Outlook is interesting because I think that Microsoft bought a Compli, right? Mm -hmm. and, which was a very nice, I thought, email program mm -hmm. uh, for iOS. And I'm of the opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, that most of the features in Outlook for iOS are actually a complex features, mm -hmm. but they're giving it away, which is nice. Yeah. So I think that's a good, I think that's a good, uh, a actually pretty good choice outlook. Yeah. I think, um, I know a lot of people that use that and it's got some good features. You can also, um, get, if you do a lot with Dropbox or Google drive, it has access to that, which is nice. When it says reply on the go, does that mean auto replies? Probably not. I think that it has auto replies. Let's see. I had some Cur some okay so let's see anthony sent me um uh a message that mm -hmm. says rate my outfit what do you think of today's outfit it's not giving me a <laughs> no no auto reply on that either <laughs> no no but this That's is really more about the eyebrow yeah. if you ask me oh uh, he it looks like he added a little pole in there somehow oh he's got a pole what program what is he is. using for that i don't know well it doesn't work so it doesn't matter <laughs> no it doesn't work um so you have not yet made me want to switch from apple mail you, i haven't no nope. i could add this to the calendar i could rate his outfit and then um i don't know why i would add, like what maybe, program lets you do that this Edison? is uh outlook outlook okay so if i wanted to rate his yeah, outfit outlook's later, very businessy right that. so that's the kind of thing you do in business yes mm -hmm. let me add you to my calendar yes exactly yes. it is very businessy um yeah, so no no smart replies, I guess. Uh, what else can I do? I can, I can. It do, has swiping. Yeah. So in fact, a Compli, I'm pretty sure invented that. They were the first to do it in uh, in an email I program. I think so too. Yeah. So I could move this to a folder called Weird Emails that Anthony has sent me, or move it to um, another inbox. I could say it's spam. I could schedule it later. I could print the conversation. It's a good feature. Um. So, yeah. Somebody in the chat was asking, "Can is there any e uh, email program that will read you your email? That would oh, be cool, read wouldn't it? it? Out loud? I don't know of one. I that would be really neat. You know, a f Newton had a feature, and I think Edison has this feature as well with your Amazon um, Echo that you can say, you used to be able to say, hey, Newton, read, me read my, my email. Yeah. And I believe Edison has that, too. Another reason we miss too. Newton. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, oh, Edison will do it. Okay. Goodbye, good, Newton. Goodbye, Newton. <sighs> one, goodbye. Uh, have you heard of Hop? Yeah. I was, uh, in fact, uh, on the early beta of Hop. I really thought that was an interesting idea. Is it still around? It Hop survived? is still around. Oh, good. Okay. Um, you I can... used it when it first, when they first uh, delivered it, before it was actually public. So here's what Hop looks like. You can do, you can set it to not organized by sender, but this is the organized by sender, which that's sometimes how people mm, not really. Me. Mm -mm. You don't like to organize. It's more like a text message. So this has evolved quite a bit. When Hop first came out, it was really using messaging, mm -hmm. email message. It was like a, it was like a, yeah, like you say, like messenger yeah. or messages mm -hmm. 
but it was email based. Right. Yeah. So it is a little bit like that. Um, but auto replies. No, well, that's not a feature your, that excites what is the sky me. Sky blue. Why is it? Yeah. So that? you can do. What can you do with my message to you? What basically, I guess the idea is quick back and forth messaging. Still can't use those. <laughs> I wonder how he sent that. That's probably Gmail. I wonder if that's Gmail. You know, I think he uses. knowing Anthony, he probably just pasted some emojis in <laughs> so it to drive you nuts. In there just to yeah. mess with us. Um, the, what I like, the reason why I continue to use Hop is I can reply to messages from my Apple Watch. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay. That's a good reason. With all the email programs, I turn off notifications on the watch on all of them except yeah. Hop. Okay. And then I can do the regular quick replies. So you, it, it, this I understand that for this segment you are using many many emails, yes. but normally you wouldn't use more than one email program, would you? Well, I mean, you can use like I for a long time used Edison on my iPhone and Airmail on my okay. Mac. That and makes then, sense. Um, Hop yeah. for my Apple Watch. Okay. So you never have to open it. You just get the, the messages come in everywhere. Conversational email. That's what mm -hmm. they call it. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of interesting. That's kind of it. I might try that. I like so. When how do you respond on your watch? Does it give you canned responses, or do you have to actually type? Uh, you can on your do the watch? scribble. You can scribble the scribble, which is or extremely you painful because it's one letter at a time. Yeah, or it has the canned responses, which are and this is, sometimes they match up. Like if you ask a question um, that says like, "Do, do you yes like the no. color red or yeah. blue?" Yeah. It will show up red and blue. Oh, well, that's nice. Up, but, yeah, but it has to be worded in the exact way. I don't yeah. know if I have an Apple Watch. That's, to me, this is the promise you know. of auto replies or auto, you know, is that it could really save you a lot of time if it were smart enough to really see into that email. That, I think Gmail does a pretty good job with it. So here's an email that I got. Um, it was It's actually a Twitter DM, but um, Steve Richardson sent this. Uh -huh. And um, if I want to reply to it, oh, I can hit reply. And then I could scribble or right. send an emoji or I could talk to it. Thanks for the message, Steve. Oh, that's fine. And then I sent it. Siri's pretty good about the dictation. That's yeah. that's fine. So I don't like hop on the iPhone or the iPad, but I like being able For to that. reply on my Apple Watch. So and it's free. So because. I guess so okay. So if you never open it on your phone, it's not like you're using it. You, because most modern mail systems, you can have multiple uh, applications right. retrieving mail. You just it's basically you think of that as your Apple Watch. Yes. App. I'm intrigued. And so, I, I mean, might try that. you're still going to have it on That's free, huh? your, yeah, it's free. So everybody gets to read my email. <laughs> you're still going to have the app on your iPhone and you have to live with the situation that I live with, which is I have 16 pages of apps yeah. on my which iPhone. Is, I, you know, that's um, what folders see. are for, like yeah. disregard <laughs> this app. Oh, so you need to use some folders. I know I don't use folders. We already established that. Ever? No. Page two. Oh, you're insane, girl. I love it. I love it. Look at all that. What? Look at all that no. stuff I get to look at whenever that's I want nuts. to. That's nuts. They're she, all mine. Okay. All these apps are mine. So that's why she has 16 pages. There are zero <laughs> folders. Every app is on its own. I think I might have one Out folder. there naked in the world. Mm -hmm. I use nothing but folders. Oh, well, look, I have a health folder. It's got um, iBooks and mood notes in it. <laughs> <laughs> They're not my health apps, even. <laughs> <laughs> That's really confusing. This is so, so sad. So I'm just going to point out, I, on the other hand, am a folder-centric fella. I know. Like, I have the front pages stuff I use. And, and this changes. For instance, I'm about to travel, so I'm putting some of the apps I'm going to use, like the microblog and the Toodle app <laughs> and photo card. And then almost always, the next page is all folders. Mm -hmm. There's one app mm -hmm. because that's going to be my app cap. And then the last, so on, this is true on my iPhone, too. The last page is kind of like settings and stuff. So on my iPhone, this is the stuff I use all the time. And I do actually have front page folders on the iPhone. All folders, page two. Settings, page three. Do you have the same setup on your iPhone and your iPad? No. Ugh. No, no. I don't. That seems like that's a heavy cognitive load. Does it? If you know what I mean. <laughs> I know. You're right. Um Maybe that'll be my this week. Oh, this is uh, my anyway. life is trying yeah. to reduce my cognitive load. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, Gmail has smart replies, as you know. So with my uh, email, this rate my outfit um, from Anthony, I yeah. can say love it, I like it, or very nice. See, what it, if no, I hate it? But, no, okay, but 
<laughs> at least they're germane to the topic at yes. hand. Let's see. If I they, agree. There should be more. <gasps> Look, why is the sky blue? What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know why. Perfect. Let me find out the hot dog answer. Oh, look, it did have a good. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can. No, I can't. Yeah, I can pick up hot dog buns for you. Of course I can, Leo. See, that's what you want. Gmail. That was what I surprised me of how many people, when I put this out on Twitter, were like, Gmail. Yeah. I use Gmail. And you don't have to have a Gmail account. To oh, use wait a, a minute. Gmail app. Okay, because I don't have it. I mean, I have a Gmail account, but I don't use it for my email. You're telling me I could use it for another account? Mm -hmm. Inbox 2? Mm -hmm. Or no? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could set up a different account? Mm -hmm. A fast mail account? That's what I use. Would it do the... It wouldn't do the auto reply, I bet. I don't know. We'll have... There's, I feel like we need to do a follow-up. Set it up episode. right now. Set it up. Set no, it up. You keep to talking. Confirm. Set it up to confirm. I know Gmail does it. I would assume Inbox does it, but... Well, it may not because it's, you know... Because it's Google. Yeah, so you set <laughs> One that up. does not know. I'm very intrigued. Okay, um, I'm typing as fast as my little fingers will type. Okay, while you do that, I'm going to uh, show off something um, important that Ed Riley told me. This to is do. a nice feature, though. Look at this inbox. It is now looking and it sees I have some new. This is a newer feature. Mm -hmm. I have some newsletters. Unsubscribe from RG exclusive offers. Unsubscribe. Unsubscribe from BJ's Wholesale Club. I can unsubscribe or no thanks. Unsubscribe. Because you haven't opened any emails from the center in the last month. That is, that's the kind of intelligence I like in an email mm -hmm. program. This is inbox. So you're saying I could, because right now it's tied to, you know, my, my Gmail that I don't use. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's stuck with Gmail. You can't add an account? You can add an account, right? Uh, uh, Under. Uh, uh, <laughs> see, by the way, all the ridiculous um, folders I have. No, I. It it, it looks like um, low priority. Read later. Notes. Newsletters. That? Lists. Oh. Blogs. Sane. Not. This. Yeah. I don't even use sane mail anymore. I don't oh know, yeah, you tried that. All those silly. What if you touch your face. Touch my face. Yeah. Yeah, I can happen? add another account, but oh. it's all got to be a Gmail account. Oh, it does. Are you I think sure? So. Okay. Add, add account. account. And then. Well, if you don't want to, you you could have hit cancel, <sighs> hit cancel, 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 and then add account, and then hit cancel, and it won't. Oh, you already tried that. Cancel means cancel. Okay, I'm gonna try it with. Um, no, I got. Look at if there's anything I've learned from this show is no means no, mm -hmm. and cancel means cancel. <laughs> you, have, you have learned no means no. If there, well, mostly. <laughs> okay, add an account. Okay, I'm gonna add your account. Um, because uh, wait, do, do Gmail. Yeah, let's see if it works. Because that was inbox. Maybe yeah, Gmail okay. works. You're gonna do Gmail? No, you go. Uh, okay. I don't think I have Gmail on here. Um, set up an email. Okay, so I could do. Look. Okay, you're right. Gardner made a good point. One does not simply assume Gmail and inbox work the same. Thank you. One does not. So Gmail, I can add an iCloud account. I can add a Hotmail account. I can add an Office 365, Yahoo, or other IMAP. Okay, I so, have IMAP. So I'm gonna add you. Okay. So, but the real question is. If it will do the auto reply and all the mm -hmm. nice features of Gmail, that is the, but we also corrected my mistake, which was you're going to get tons of inbox email. doesn't tell do, Megan that she's wrong. Inbox does not does not. But that's not. I'm not surprised. But Gmail does mm -hmm. allow you to use uh, an IMAP any IMAP account, and most mail servers are, allow IMAP. That so that's sense. really uh, that's really interesting. Now I'm uh, so I have to sign. Oh, this is interesting. I have to sign into my Google account even to use this. Does that mean... Now I'm going to add an account. Other IMAP. Add your address. Okay. I'm wondering, though, if all my mail will now go through Google on not, its way to me. Oh. Just so that they can scan my email. Is this just a ploy? Mm. You know, Google stopped a year ago. Stopped scanning email for advertising mm -hmm. purposes. So I, I would, I'd have to think... It might not be a ploy so much as it's just a um, the way it works. It's a free service. Right. Right. Um, okay, this is going to be complicated, so I'm not going to... Okay. Uh, Can I... Um, just you talk while I okay. type. All right. Thank you to Ed for pointing out this um, this tip from Ed. Don't forget, don't when you're forget. done testing and trying all these crazy email apps that I recommend, don't no. forget to remove Google app access to all these. So you go to myaccount.google.com slash permissions. 
Um, and I'm going to open that link here. I don't know what's going to show up. Okay. So, no, go ahead. Um, so, close your eyes, Leo, because you are not going to want to see all the things that I've given um, Google third party access. <laughs> uh, all the third parties I've given. So, Airmail, Airmail for iOS, Airtable. Alexa. Airtable? What's that? Airtable is an excellent app that I use to make charts. For oh. example, I made a chart that had all the nice. um, apps. Uh, Amazon has access to the calendar. Astro, that's one that I, you know, I've i also tried. Aware, that's a IoT um, a, uh, air quality determiner. Boomerang, Calendly. I don't even know what Calendly is. And these are all reading your email? The, well, Why does it some need to, are, No, no, no. So you're are, misunderstanding. Some of these are using your Google account for login. And some are just Google account. Like uh, Amazon Echo is not does not have access to my email, just my Google calendar. This is yeah, just yeah, their yeah, yeah, account yeah. access okay. in general, not yeah. just reading That's my email. That's worth looking at, but do look at the ones that read your email. Yes. That's the ones that you want to be aware of. Remember, you use your Google account lots of times to log into an app, and that's right. a convenience. And it doesn't mean Google has access to no, that information. But it's it just... does mean you should go through here and think, oh, do absolutely. I really need, yeah. uh, I, I don't remember what Mixmax was. I'm going to just remove Mixmax. access. They had access to your email? They, I, they had access to something. And Newton doesn't is going away, so I might as well remove, remove access, that access yeah. to, to them. So, yeah, you can, I'm not but saying. But read, these... what I'm saying is on the right where it says what that can do. Right. That's the key because many of those you're just using Google as a single sign on. Right. Here's what oh, I sign oh, in oh, with oh, Google. Oh, 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 Okay. So that's these. a separate thing. So, but these Where are do I get this? Myaccount.google.com. Yeah. I knew that, but I'm just. Yeah. But I'm just telling everybody again. Um, so, yeah. I, I knew that. Yeah. Of course you knew that. I knew that. Oh, I have to sign in. Um, here are Google apps. The trusted apps by Google installed on my devices. The thing I do like about, I admire about Google is they do at least reveal all this stuff. Yeah, right? of course, because they were forced to. <laughs> I don't know if they were forced to. They've always, they they've encouraged. kind of always done that. It's easier to find now. It's, yeah, I mean, they're, they're refining it. But, but from day one, they had this Google takeout. Remember, they, they, look, I'm not saying they don't spy on you like crazy. They do. And the way they justify it is, but you can turn it off. You can see what we're doing. And there are a lot of everybody spies on you, let's mm -hmm. face it. Uh, but not everybody tells you what they know mm -hmm. and gives you a way to delete it. So mm -hmm. at least if you're going to spy on me, at least give me that information. Mm -hmm. right? And you're right. In some cases, the location, most recently, this location history kerfuffle, Google has been less than candid. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and then they get caught and, uh, and they go, oh, well, we thought everybody understood that location history is different than sending your location when you use maps or search. Oh, you don't understand that? Okay, well, we'll make that more clear. Then we'll see if it well, remains to be seen how much clearer they're going to make it. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, they want to collect as much information as they can. I, I, I think, though, that Google's heart is in the right place on that one, that they're, tr they're trying to be clear about what they do. And they figure, rightly, that everybody's going to let them do it anyway. Right. So go ahead and tell them. Yeah. I, I Why not? Take whatever you want from me. I have one more. One more email. Third app. party apps with account access. Okay, so now I'm looking at mine. Oh, okay. Okay. So some of these are operating systems like my Am and my Amazon has access to Google Calendar. Well, mm -hmm. you'd expect that. You can hard I know you can hardly read these. Oh, yeah. Baz has access to YouTube. I can get rid of that. That, that, that I don't use that program anymore. So yeah, this is a very useful thing. Mm -hmm. Who Let's knows what up. Cloud Gateway is? That's part of the problem. What's Cloud yeah. Gateway? Does it have a link or anything? Visit app on Google Play. Hmm. We're sorry, not found. <laughs> huh. Uh, access was given March 17th. I'm going to, I don't, if, you know what, if it breaks something, you'll know what it is, right? right. Then you go, oh, uh, Epic Games. You know what that is? Mm, Fortnite. Fortnite. Yeah. Has access to Google Plus. <laughs> okay. If you really insist. Fantastical, fast mail, full contact. Yeah, these are all programs I uh, I use. That's this is good though. What is this Mac Agenda? Mac Agenda has access to my calendar. Like Remove that. M A A K. M A A K. Yeah, that I can leave. Mevo, I use that to live stream sometimes. Minimal Sudoku. Remove. Yeah, this is good. Mm -hmm. This is really good. Thank Ed for that tip. Yeah. Oh, you know. Okay, so it says Toomey has access to Google Plus. But I, that's because I bought a bag from them. That probably has more to do with the fact that they uh, they used this as a, a login. But you know mm -hmm. what? I don't want them posted on my behalf. So, hmm. 
I'm going to take that out. Wink, you bet. They got access to everything. I have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> signing in with Google. Yeah, this is a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Do it with Facebook, too. Yeah. It's a little harder with Facebook to find all mm -hmm. of those, but do. That's my thermometer. Why does my meat thermometer need access to my Google That's account? That's a really good question. <laughs> all right, one more email app. Um, this one is for pros who really yes. want it. This one's $6.99. It's called Dispatch. And the first feature of it, as you can see, so is I'm a pro, allow, so I'm interested. It'll allow you oh. to use Touch ID yeah, or so Face no, ID. Yeah, that's good. Um, so it locks the email down. Mm -hmm. And then you can do all kinds of things. It, it works with Text Expander. So if you oh, often love that. send a lot of emails that uh, need require res you know canned responses, you can do that. Um, here's that email that I replied to from my watch, which was, you know, just, it was a tweet. So it wasn't it's interesting. Right. So that email avatar it picked up. I wonder where from it got, you? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder where it got that. I know. That is a good <laughs> question. Uh, that's, a, that's an interesting. Uh, I don't where know. Where did it the, get that? I don't know. <laughs> um, so here are all the things I could do. I could, um, if I put. Ooh, a, look, it's got buttons at the bottom. Yes. Lots. Um, I so can. instead of swiping, this is a this is a button bar. Yeah, at the and bottom. I could share, share. it. Share. It's a share sheet. So I could send you that in a text oh, message. Oh, that's actually could, handy. Yeah, I could airdrop that's this That's a much more appropriate uh, icon you've got there for me. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I could just immediately add this to Evernote, Simple Note, all the notes apps. That's, um, okay. That's, so share okay. sheet, that, that's worth that's the $6. What's it called again? Uh, it's called uh, Dispatch. I know you can see it across the bottom of the screen, but I can't. Okay. So I'll take um, this. So I can do all these different e things. Email meets GTD, they call mm -hmm. it. Getting things done. Um, hmm. I could star it. I could add it. The dot means I'm going to add it to a to-do list. So this is like the flagging. Um, if I want to um, see all the things I can do, I can make it a memo. Um, but especially if you find yourself doing a lot of, um, you know, canned responses. This one. It's been around the, a long time. This dispatch. One. Yeah, it's yeah. It really is the GTD getting things done. So that's where all of this email triage. That's where all of this came from because it just is like you got to get it out of your face, get it out of your mind, so you can focus on your work. Yes, your creativity. that's the GTD mm -hmm. part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it dispatch. works with a lot of to-do apps too, automatically. So that's mm -hmm. this is pretty sweet. It is. It is very nice. Um, I do. Like it. I mean, it definitely. You have four seconds to undo your last action. Ooh. One, two. That's a lot. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, when you install all these iOS apps, they, many of them make your signature their advertisement. So make sure to change that. Always. Right away. First thing I do. Yeah. Change Notice that. I have a custom signature that is quite elaborate, has mm -hmm. my email, my phone number. My, you know, what I actually uh, do now everywhere is I put a link to um, Keybase, where my PGP key is, so people want to send me encrypted email, they can. But also, it has what we call proofs for the, all of my sites that I've de demonstrated I own those sites. And so it has, a, I, I don't know how to put this, geeks would say the canonical, my canonical sites that I've approved. And um, I think that's a good thing. We need a way to do that, a kind of a, a universal infrastructure where people could say, this is me, this, 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 and this is me. Mm -hmm. There are a number of attempts at this, but I think we need I think we need ways to do that. Like that's your real Twitter account, mm -hmm. not the other one. Right, exactly. things like that. Yeah. And so, I mean, the moral of this story, the moral of this long tale of iOS email apps, is find out the most important feature for you. Like, rate the features that you need for you. It's privacy. For me, it is being able to snooze and customize my snooze buttons, and then smart replies is my second feature. And then find that email that that um, you know that email app that supports that. And this uh, this dispatch works with my uh, app cap. Oh. So we'll talk about okay, that. But I'm going to buy it right now. Okay. I think it looks like a very good utility for All $7. Right. I have two cups of coffee here. One, Why do you have two? Well, one was the one I poured before the show and one was the Tres Pontes oh, that John One has poured. hazelnut in it. Mm -hmm. One is actual coffee. Mm -hmm. Did you do that? Yeah, is it hazelnut the other one? The the other one is ugh, hazelnut. Yeah, <laughs> Trace Pontes. I give I give Megan a hard time because she drinks flavored coffees. Mm -hmm. uh, you can flavor your Trace Pontes. I like my coffee flavored, you like my co-hosts. <laughs> you won't. 
I'm I'm Leo flavored. You won't want to flavor this though because it's so delicious all by its own. Tres Pontas is freshly roasted, delicious coffee, straight from a single farm in Brazil, the Race family farm. They've been growing some of the best premium gourmet coffees in Brazil for three generations, over a hundred years. And it's the first time you've ever been able to get this in the United States. The, the, the guys who run Tres Pontas are really interesting. They, they, they decided to go down to Brazil, find the best coffee in the best coffee land in the world, bring it up to the United States. They bring up the green beans, roast them locally. That way you get them fresh. This was specially roasted, and you can even see the date, August 14th. We've had this one for a while because usually you get it a few days later. It's almost still warm. You can also see exactly where it was grown. The Race Family Farm in Katuai at 1,100 meters. Height's good for coffee beans. Oh, this is another thing that's important. Processing. Pulped natural. Be these beans are not washed. Washing is something sometimes they have to do with beans if they're moldy. Equatorial beans tend to get moldy. You don't want mold in your coffee beans. Not a problem with Tres Pontes. They're so fresh. They're grown at altitude. They don't get moldy, so they don't have to be washed. Washing washes off, I think, one of the most important parts of the coffee bean. That husk is what makes coffee smooth. So Pult Natural is exactly what you're looking for. It's a smoother brew. This uh, this is the uh, light roast, which I really like. They have dark. They have French. Let me, do, let me show you another cool feature of this. It's got a, a QR code on the back of it. Let me put this on my iPhone. That shows where it was grown. So, and you also see if you if you're uh, if you're a do it yourself. Why is it not? There it is. It'll show the uh, longitude and latitude. This is this is this is. I love this. There, right there. That's that's the coffee bean tree. <laughs> that's the farm. Look at this beautiful Tres Pontes farm up in the mountains in Brazil. Every bag of beans has the roast date printed on it. You know your coffee's fresh. Every bag has the QR code with the longitude and latitude. So you can see exactly where your coffee's from. I have to tell you, this is the best coffee you'll ever have. You see those beans? It's so beautiful. Tres Pontes uses 100% Arabica beans, of course. Certified non-GMO, certified kosher. Picked by hand. Roasted by hand in small batches. Pulped natural, processed naturally, not washed. And you can get them sent to you on a subscription. By the way, while you're there, take a look at the amazing olive oil. The beans went so well, they then went to Chile and got an olive oil farm in Casa de Casablanca Valley. It's the best olive oil I've ever had. Less than 0.2% acidity. It's the smoothest olive oil ever. You can combine coffee and olive oil in your subscription if you want. Here's how it works. If you sign up for a subscription at trespontas.com slash iOS and, and uh, you use the code iOS, you get 10% off because you're subscribing Plus, 10% because you use the offer code iOS, 20% off every delivery of coffee in your subscription. You can get it every one, two, or four weeks, free shipping in the U.S., 12-ounce bags. So, And they make them a little bit smaller than a pound, and that's a good thing because you, you, know, you want to keep this as fresh as possible. So if you go through 12 ounces a week, just get it coming every week. You don't have to pay for shipping. No big deal. And the 20% off means it's very affordable. Tres Pontas. T-R-E-S-P-O-N-T-A-S. That means three points in uh, Portuguese. Tres Pontas. Actually, if I'm going to say it in Portuguese, it would be Tres Pontas. I was told. Mm. But if I say Tres Pontas.com, you'll, you'll think Sean Connery's asking. <laughs> you'll, you won't know how to spell it. So I say Tres Pontas. T-R-E-S-P-O-N-T-A-S.com slash I-O-S and the code I-O-S. And that is what we're drinking. You can order this on Amazon, but you won't get the... Uh, discount so if you say well i gotta try before i buy leo get it on amazon that's fine but you will want to subscribe ultimately if you like it and i think you will for 20 percent off when you use the offer code ios it is so good it is very good now do you drink yours black i do so that's a this coffee is so good so smooth you can drink it black mm -hmm. it really is great i'm sorry there's no hazelnut in it no no hazelnut i could just put a little nutella in there for you if it make you happy no, thank you. You can mock my hazelnut all you want. I have a thick skin. <laughs> you have because you work with me. <laughs> exactly. You've learned.
Okay, it's time to talk about some rumors. <laughs> Rumor uh, roundup. It, we are getting so close to the Apple event now that the rumors are coming fast and I furious. I, maybe there won't be an event. I've suggested that. That's going to be, but wouldn't that be wrong. funny? It no, would, there'll be an event. Yeah. And I'm almost certain it'll be September 12th. That's why I cleverly time my vacation mm -hmm. so I wouldn't That's be here. That's two weeks from now, right? Two yeah. weeks from tomorrow. And I've, we've gone, gone through the logic before, but it, I think we've all, ever, all the rumor sites, everybody's converged on September 12th is the most likely day. Remember, though, Apple uh, owns the Steve Jobs Theater. They can, they can change their mind. They could change their mind tomorrow and make it September 18th if they want. If it's not ready or they feel like there's a reason to wait, they could do that. So... You know, none of this is based on anything Apple says. This no. is all speculation. But if it is September 12th, and one of the reasons we think that is there's a German phone company <laughs> that says pre-orders begin midnight on September 14th, <laughs> which would be exactly what you'd expect if the uh, um, event is September 12th. I think, now here's the real question we don't know, but I think that they're going to announce iPads and iPhones. What do you think? Um, I think that they, I, I don't think they'll do two events. So yes, I do think that yeah. they will. Uh, they have new Macs too, according to Mark Gurman, who's yeah. a very connected rumor at Bloomberg. Yeah, his newest article says two, uh, says high, new colors. The color will be, okay, so he has idea that there'll be three different phones. There's going to be the D32 is what they're. That's Apple's internal numbers. Yes, that's yeah. a 5.8 inch OLED screen. Um, and then that's basically the the existing iPhone 10 with a faster processor. Right, uh, better speed, better camera. D33 will have a 6.5 inch screen diagonally with the ability to view content side by side. That's so, the you know, biggest screen look. Apple's ever made. Yeah, 6.5 inch screen. Also, should, though, much like an iPhone 10, it'll have the Face ID, no fingerprint. It'll mm -hmm. have the same gestures, iOS 12, all of that stuff. So. That's probably the one I'm going to get. Which one are you going to get? That's a good question because I, I love this I think you should get the size. cheap one. <laughs> okay. I'll get the colored cheap one. Uh, That's the, the LCD model, D30. DN84. Oh, that's confusing. To <laughs> replace the iPhone 8. It's, it'll have a 6.1 inch screen. Same LCD. size as the 8. Yes, LCD instead of OLED. Just like the 8. Cheaper aluminum edges instead of stainless steel, and it will be colored. Because the aluminum edges can be anodized to be colored. So, and actually, I saw one rumor that said it might have a different color back than the edge. This will be interesting. You know, we don't know. They're, they're, at this point, the only thing we don't know is this stuff. So we can, they, can, they can have fun speculating on that. But three models, low cost. I will do the colored one. There's no reason for us to get no, no. the same one. I want to get the colored one no, no, because no, 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 people no. are going to want no, no, to no. know what I like. No, colors. I know where she's going with this, and I'm not happy. She's going to get two phones. <laughs> we have to get the colored one. And, of course, I wouldn't want to use the colored yeah. one. Yeah. So I have to get the, would you get the big size or would you get, you said you like this size. I do size. like this size. So you should get the middle size. The 6.1. Now pricing, we don't know, but yeah. I'm going to guess. And write this down so we'll see uh, if I'm wrong because I won't be around. I'll be, in, I'll be in, on the Amalfi Coast in Italy when mm -hmm. this happens. Uh, I'm going to say about 700 mm -hmm. for the LCD the version. One. That's a little. Is that too high? 650? Mm -hmm. 650. Start at, I think it's going to start at 700. Okay, that's what I was saying. Yeah, maybe six. Yeah, it's a, don't, these are going to be expensive. The the one that is the iPhone 10 replacement. What does the iPhone 10 start at? Nine fifty? Think nine fifty no, or a thousand? No, I think it 1, starts at a thousand. Okay, I think a thousand. I think the six point four inch. Brace yourself, eleven ninety nine, starting at eleven ninety nine, and then of course it goes up depending on how much storage you have in the phone. Mm -hmm. All of these will have the new fast processor. I'm sure they'll put the same processor in all three. I hope so. That's why I'm saying 700, because it will be as fast as, just the only difference will be the screen and the materials, mm -hmm. but it will be as fast as, I hope, it, I'm sure it will be fast as. All three will have Face ID. Uh, all three will have, the, I think, pretty much the same camera systems, although that's, sometimes in the past with the smaller phones, they don't have dual cameras mm -hmm. or, you know, so that, what do you think? Yeah, we haven't I, heard much about that. No. They, they, uh, one of the rumors was there'll be a dual SIM. Single rear regions. camera, according to group. Bloomberg, that's Mark Gurman. So if he says that, it's usually true. Yeah. Single, so that would make sense for the less expensive. And then the 5.8 OLED dual rear cameras for the middle-sized one, the one you're going to get. Mm -hmm. What do I get? Tell me what Tell me what I win, you Jerry. You should get the nicest 6. one. 6.4. Well, I, I like a big screen. Mm -hmm. 6.5 inches OLED dual rear cameras. 
I wonder if this, the cameras will be different on yeah. that one. Sometimes they do things like, mm -hmm. well, it has optical image stabilization in the most expensive one, and it has digital image stabilization in the less expensive one. Sometimes they do things like that, but... Well, Neil sent me a link that he got an email from the case company Totally, and I've ordered cases from totally, them. Totally, totally. Totally. Um, and so there's the, they are already selling these cases for the iPhone XS. <laughs> um, They're calling it the XS. And then if you look at okay, the- Okay, can I just say that's not a good name? XS. Uh, can you write the headline, <laughs> the XS. review headline? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then the other, if you look at the other link, Kevin, that has a different camera look. See that? The iPhone 9. 9 um, has just, I don't know what's That's going on. That's the less expensive one. That might yeah. be, make sense. They do 9. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah might make the sense. 9 would be the, the And then one there'd be an X Plus would be the big one. Yeah. The big boy. Mm -hmm. Mark Gurman in his most recent post on Bloomberg said, we might be wrong about these names. Mm -hmm. Apple has changed its mind, perhaps, mm -hmm. about the names. I hope they change the name of the, the XS. XS. Yeah. It has been, though, in the past, right? The uh, iPhone 7, the 7S, the mm -hmm. 6, the 6S, and then the 6 Plus. So maybe, you know, 6S Plus. Um, okay, here's a rumor I don't believe. The Verge reported this, and other people reported this, that Apple could remove 3D Touch. I don't believe that they would remove 3D Touch because I think people have no. just started why would they to do that. I, oh. Why would they do that? I don't know why they would do oh, that. Look at the picture of the analyst on the right. That's why. <laughs> It has no fingers. <laughs> no, um, I think that they're not going to remove 3D Touch because too many applications use it. Yeah. Not enough. I, I acknowledge that. It's kind of a flop. But I use it like, a, you know, I was, you know, for instance, I'm going to be using uh, WordPress to blog, mm -hmm. of course, our sponsor. And it has a very nice 3D Touch feature where I can press hard on the icon and I can choose what I want to do in the app, including make a post. It's a very quick way to post. Yeah. Well, Outlook, I like that. Outlook has, you can do a new event in your calendar and a new email at the same time um, with 3D Touch. I don't think that they're going to, you can view your calendar. I can is nuts. actually see. I, I think so too. And Steve Stroughton Smith, who, who I is, do trust, he says he doesn't believe yeah. that he thinks they're wrong. And he goes, he has a long Twitter thread. He about, looks at the code. Yes. Um, he just thinks that they're not going to do that. And um, but, yeah, he's got a picture of reasons. Steve Jobs from 100 years ago saying, <laughs> We're not going to take out 3D Touch. <laughs> yes, talking Ever. to Walt Mossberg. Yeah. Um, Never. Uh -uh. It was something he said about design and what they do and do, like what their policy of, you know, their design theory is. Well, I mean, you could say somebody in the chat room saying it. They took away fingerprint, but there was a good reason and they replaced it with something better. Yeah. And, and one day we realized that death would eventually take care of this. And <laughs> death. So. <laughs> Okay. Well, <laughs> that, that went dark fast. Uh, yeah. I, um, headphone jack, they took it out. But again, they said courage. So it's okay. Also, the headphone jack was antiquated. And I mean, I guess you could- Was it? Was it really antiquated? Yes. That's why they took it off the uh, iPad, it's right? Antiquated. It's Anyone antiquated. Anyone who requires it is antiquated. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it was antiquated. Well, I'm just, what my argument is 3D Touch was just invented two years ago. Yeah, no, they're not going to <laughs> So. They, they would be letting down a lot of developers who took the time to put 3D Touch features in. Uh, I don't use 3D Touch because I always, free, I think if you were going to make the argument, it's because people don't use it, right? And I'm sure Apple knows how many people use mm -hmm. it. And I guess if their metrics said, hey, you know, nobody's ever doing it. Because you don't know. That's the problem. If every app had used it, if every app had supported it, then it would be, oh, okay. But I don't know what's going to happen when I 3D touch. And most apps, nothing happens. And so that you quickly go, well, I'm not going to try that anymore. Well, I mean, the, but like you said, there's one, there's features. Like I always use it if someone wants to give me their contact info because then you just Actually, I'm seeing touch more, and add it automatically. You know what? I'm pressing a lot of apps and a lot of apps have it. This is not a good one, but uh, Dark Sky. Actually, that's not bad. 3D Touch, weather. Dark Sky, gives yeah. you the weather. Uh, 3D Touch Audible, you can search, my library. This is actually, you know what? They're not taking it out. It's too useful. Yeah. The worst you're going to get is something like this with Hangouts. It doesn't do it. This is really dopey. Share, share. I know that's the worst. I guess the that's the that default, shares. right? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, can share. Pokemon Go, Which share. I've certainly used that before, too. I mean, when you want to share an app with someone. Yeah. So for people who don't know, you know, 3D Touch is you press a little extra hard on the uh, icon 
and you'll get uh, some appropriate thing. So, but I, I think you know, I, no, they're not going to take it out. There's no, there's, there's just no way. And I'm going to, you know what? Just so that uh, it doesn't go away, I'm going to use it more. I'm going to use it more too. Yeah. Me too. We should all take the pledge. Yeah. Three D touch everything. I'm going to touch everything on your phone. On my on phone. your phone. <laughs> All right, so... Almost got that faster. There, there's a few uh, new digital well-being um, features in the YouTube app that you might want to know about. We should do this every show from now on, compare our digital well-being. Yeah, we should. <laughs> I don't have the... Okay, let's try it on the iPad. I'll try... I'll use Moment. Oh, because um, you don't have it turned on on your iPhone. You only have no. iOS 12 on right. your iPad for right so, now. So, I've uh, used my phone for 45 minutes today. According to moment. Wow. You think that's a lot or a little? I think you're out of control. I <laughs> look at look at um where do Friday. I find, where do I find that on my uh screen time? <laughs> Under settings how does, screen how time. How does an iPhone work? <laughs> okay, so this is embarrassing. On Friday I spent five five hours and thirty five minutes, seventy times pick up. I tried to, um, last night at our family dinner last night, I said that I wanted everyone to install this app and then we'd have a competition to see who used their phone the least amount of time. That's what I'm thinking. This is the way to get everybody to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You want to compete? Yeah. We'll, well, we'll start competing once okay, I get Okay, on all my devices yeah. today, 49 minutes, that's iPhone and iPad, 55 minutes in creativity, eight minutes in other, eight minutes, that doesn't add up. That's four minutes above average. And I can see now you you were, uh, so photo card, I, did, I spent a while setting up photo card uh, today. Show oh, my yeah. phone. Mine's much more interesting than hers. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Mine's just sad. Yours is sad. Mine has graphs. <laughs> photo card, I guess, creativity, 55 mm -hmm. minutes. A little time in the settings. I don't know why. App store. Uh, pickups. What what is pickups? How, How many, many times, times you, pick, you up? pick it up? Two per hour? Oh man, that's embarrassing. Yeah. Total of twenty seven pickups, most of them between nine and ten a.m. Thirteen times I picked it up between nine and ten a.m. It's probably playing Pokemon Go. Five an hour notifications. Fifteen of them for Hangouts. Twelve for my cameras. I put just so people know because I'm leaving on vacation. My house, every room now has a camera in it. So just I'm just telling you, don't. <laughs> But I want to be on camera. <laughs> uh, Pocket Cast, listen to podcasts, news, WordPress, messages, calendar. I don't feel embarrassed by any of this. The problem is you're not using uh, screen time, so your numbers aren't quite. Well, I'm using it on the iPad, so. Um, I could do it on here. I could do it on here. Where um, Where do you get that graph? Right here? Yeah. <laughs> Finally, I could tell her something. <laughs> So two hours and 26 minutes. I mean, most of that is, we've been sitting here for two hours. Yeah. Um, we but have? Like, yeah, last, <laughs> oh, man. Last seven days. Oh, yeah, let's do seven days. That's better. Okay. 17 minutes a day for me. Um, Where? 17 minutes a day. Last seven days. Oh, four, 14, no. Yeah, show hers. Show hers. <laughs> two hours, seven minutes a day. <sighs> yeah. Oh, okay, yours is 17 minutes. Yeah. That's yeah. my okay. children. Your children? <laughs> no. <laughs> blame uh, it. That's why you have children, so you can blame children. things on them. Uh, most on photo card, an hour and 10 minutes. I spent, that's, you know what? That's good to know, though. I know I did that because I was setting it up for our trip, mm -hmm. but that's nice to know. Well, yeah, you Audible, is listen to a book for 50 minutes. See, this I want to bring up. I should listen to books for more. 50 minutes. Drafts, that's who I've talked about that. Prime Video and Netflix. Those I'm not watching movies, I'm downloading movies. That's a tip for travel, by the way. Both will let you download movies mm. and watch offline on the plane. Yeah, so mine is uh, YouTube, uh, one hour and 44 minute average. That really That's the kids. I don't not. blame you on that one. Um, that's pretty cool. But that's why I brought up this thing. When I was talking about the digital well-being feature, that is in the YouTube app, not in screen time, and you can get it right now. Right. They will they just added that. remind yeah. you to take a break and they'll tell you how much you've them. watched yeah. Ooh, you don't want to know actually that's not for us we don't watch youtube it's for kids i know and it's it's a it's a pretty common struggle at my house because my kids are watching really interesting stuff i don't and they come out with like the most amazing facts about geography exactly and science but i have it's no problem too many hours but but wait, how many hours of TV do you watch? Yeah. That's what their TV is. They're I not know. sitting in front it's of the true. tube. It's They're true. sitting in front of the YouTube. 
So I, I'm, I think their generation, I, I think about Henry, my 24-year-old, he learned how to cook from YouTube. Mm -hmm. I tried for his whole childhood to show him how to cook, and it bounced off. But, man, all of a sudden he's saying, you know, I said the other day, I said, oh, I'm going to cook butter chicken today. And he said, oh, you got to try the recipe from Vice. He, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's really good. Yeah. No, I know. I my kids no are talking about, like, you know, They probably listen to those history and, podcasts and Yeah, they do. And they the do it all. And, and, you know, I'm biased because I'm their mom and I want them to be spending time with me. And that's the last thing a 13-year-old boy wants to, to do. And so <laughs> don't really listen to no. me about how bad YouTube is. It's just like I'm clinging to the child. Well, it can be children. bad. It's what they're listening. If they're watching Logan Paul all day, that's not good. Right. And if they are, I mean, if they're doing it instead of doing anything else, my problem is they finish all their homework. You're just like and your they, mother. Get you know. outside and get some fresh air. Stop watching Gilligan's Island. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think in a way they, they're better off than we were watching that yes. crap, those crap sitcoms or whatever mm -hmm. we were watching, cartoons. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, but what it'll reflect is the kids. So your kids, I'm impressed. They want to learn, then they use YouTube to learn. Mm -hmm. Um, they're, they're, but I mean, it, it'll depend on the person. Some people will just watch crotch shot videos all day and that isn't good. No, I mean, if, but also they come up with these facts that I'm not sure are correct ah, either. That's interesting. Um, so yeah, if you, let's, let's just expose the recommendations from my children. There's, it's like um, Abraham Lincoln said, people who spend so much time on YouTube can't be trusted. Exactly. Time lapse of the entire universe, a form of matter that exists in four dimensions. So like, you could, this is what this, they're looking at. Yeah. You can tell. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can tell. Um, ant first aid, how to touch the sun. Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> wait a minute. Ant first aid? These ant paramedics save their injured com comrades. Oh, the ants do it though, not it's you. It's some science thing. You don't, yeah. have to, you don't have to help the ants. They it's help the themselves. Science. Show. Yeah, it's, I think that's fantastic. Go to a Jeff, and get um, you know, but the animals don't have doctors. If they're injured, wounds John are Green, or, I do. Oh, or, that's they're either great. John Green or Greens John Green's brother. Yeah, Except Hank. That might not. Hank Green. I think that's they're Hank great. Green. But maybe, and this is where I am kind of old fashioned. Mm -hmm. I, I I think a lot of YouTube stuff is bright, breezy, and light. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a you know ant first aid, it's bright, breezy, and light. But maybe that's what it takes to get kids to watch, right? I don't know. Or maybe then when they get to school and then a teacher's like, rah, 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 and they yeah. don't hear anything. Well, because it's not Hank Green. Right. Who knows? I'm not solving any problems in this show. Let's continue. <laughs> it's, All it's, I can say is 17 minutes, four hours. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, speaking of kids and YouTube, this yes. is a great segue. Alan sent us a question <gasps> via email video. From Chicago. Speak up. And I have a <laughs> YouTube question. Uh, my granddaughter, who's four and a half, uses my iPhone to watch YouTube videos, and she's gotten really good at scrolling around to find things that uh, she wants to watch. Uh, but sometimes there are things that I don't want her to watch. Uh, nothing bad, uh, just things like toy unboxings. Yeah. Um, oh, that's bad. I was wondering if there are any settings on either the YouTube app or... Uh, perhaps something on a browser uh, that I might be able to use to narrow down what she can or cannot uh, watch. Uh, to, oh, and I really want to do this to avoid arguing with her over what she's allowed to watch. Uh, it's sort of easier to blame it on the phone rather than have her blame me. Uh, thanks a lot. Bye. I love that because Alan is the typical grandfather who's like, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm a grandfather. I want to say yes to everything. Right. But he no, recognizes right. that the toy yeah. unboxing is annoying and you don't want them to be watching that. And Scooter X recommended YouTube Kids. I'm pretty sure YouTube Kids has toy unboxing. So. Yeah, this is, that's one of the problems is that the, the YouTube Kids stuff, well, it's, it's kids stuff, but it's, it's kids stuff. And mm -hmm. some of the stuff that Alan doesn't want uh, his four and a half year old. To watch, there are parental controls on YouTube. Well, Knight uh, two hundred one in the chat room says so. The four year old is in charge with her grandfather. Yes, obviously. Um, come on, <laughs> are you surprised? That's what you yeah. get. I mean, it's yeah. for the the parents. I mean, different rules and conversations and come. You know, and parents. Obviously, you have conversations. I've convers had conversations with my parents about what to let them let my kids watch, what to tell them to let my kids watch and not watch. 
Um, and I think my father brought my four-year-old nephew to see Lord of the Rings in the theater. That was the last time he got creative control over what they could see. <laughs> What's wrong with Lord of the Rings? <laughs> He's 18 now. He just left for college. He's fine. He okay. survived. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't think Lord of the Rings is so bad. For a four-year-old? The movie? Did he have bad dreams afterwards you know, of Sauron? Like I said, he's in college orcs. now, so nothing. He survived. <laughs> yeah, maybe a four-year-old's a little young. <laughs> um, so does, I, I believe YouTube has uh, parental controls. Parental controls, but they're going to let toy unboxing. My, suggest, my first suggestion to Alan was create a playlist. Like you can create oh, a, that's a great playlist. Suggestion. In it's because the, the trick is that you don't want her to see... You don't want to. You don't want to have to come over and say, "No, you can't watch that." Mm -hmm. So create a playlist. That's a great idea. I mean, presumably you're watching with her, and you just don't want to say, "Like, no, that's bad," because that you don't want to. I get it too, because I think like kids are naturally going to want to watch a bunch of stuff that we don't like because we're adults. And so to constantly tell a kid like that's bad, that's dumb, you know, you're going to, they're too young to figure out that you're not saying like I'm dumb or what I like is dumb. So you want to be able to just push content to them. So creating a playlist, Alan's response was like, but then still the recommended content comes on the right. And that's true. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. So I wish there were a way to get rid of that recommended con content. I know we've shown apps in the past that have like a really like better than YouTube kids and even more controlled environment that has fun stuff. Um, we have showed some of those before. And, you know, I think that might even be a better idea. Amazon, for instance, has a kid's channel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's more Phineas and Furby than it is uh, unboxing. Mm -hmm. I think that I agree that the, it's baffling, the toy unboxing. Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting that a four and a half year old wants to watch that. I now, When I turn on restricted mode in YouTube, it doesn't really give me much set many settings it's just either on or off so yeah this isn't really going to solve his problem this no. just makes it 18 plus you know you know turns off uh videos that it would be inappropriate for people under 18 but it doesn't turn off content that is not inappropriate but just junky you know unfortunately mm -hmm. um boy i wish there were a way to do that yeah look at some of the alternatives that are streaming videos for kids that aren't youtube amazon kids is a good choice um, there, what, we have mentioned a few on the show mm -hmm. in the past. I don't um, remember off the top of my head. Yeah. And night 201, who says, my son watches YouTube sometimes, not arguing. I just have to watch with them and be the parent. Absolutely. But I mean, my kids get watched by my parents PBS a lot. Kids, you don't want them to have to fight constantly. You know, if you really want to be safe, yeah. PBS kids, we've had mentioned that in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, they're, they're all kids safe and actually because it's PBS pretty good for mm -hmm. a four and a half year old. I think that's a good choice. And she will probably say, no, I want to watch YouTube. Um, and then... Just you know, take can... YouTube off your iPad, yeah. to be honest with you. I don't. I bet I bet he doesn't... Alan doesn't care. Um, Unless Alan watches us through YouTube. Well, there's other ways you can watch <laughs> us. Um, I would I would start with Amazon Kids. I see, you see a lot of these, and I'm not sure I trust these. You could look at them. These are all kids, supposedly kid like kids tube and stuff. But I think PBS Kids is going to be the safest bet. Uh, it's that's really age appropriate stuff four plus um, so that's that's one good choice right there for you Alan Debbie writes I've been watching iOS today since I got my Apple watch in June recently I heard Leo say he uses the list layout of apps instead of the graphic layout I uh, he wanted a way to see the uh, just the few apps that he uses the most my screenshot shows how I have mine organized use the watch app on your phone to put the six apps you want around the face app and build a bridge to the remaining apps when I press the digital crown those six show up in large format let me see let me see let me Let's see, see Debbie I don't Lips. understand what she said at all so that's what you do. Oh, that she the, dragged the dots over to the right. And so that when she Got sees it. the app layout, it just shows those. Ah, so that's, that's, that's an interesting way to use it. Apple Watch app in the iPhone. Why is that ugly? Don't well, you when think? You, when you then look at the apps, it just... They, that's what shows up. Shows those. Yeah. yeah. And you drag the ones you don't want to see mm -hmm. off to the right. That's I fine. use the list too. I, list I like is the easy. List. It's alphabetic. Mm -hmm. You can scroll through it pretty quickly. And then if, you know, the, the few that you like, you can put those... In the, do in the dock, and right. that they'll, you see those mm -hmm. faster. I've gotten used to uh, navigating on it, but I just noticed I never use that dots layout any, anymore. I haven't mm -hmm. used that in a long time. Mm 
All right. Greg writes, I would like to find out if Audible will ever have an app for the Apple Watch. Until oh, then, is there I an agree. app that I can transfer my audio box books to listen to on my Series 3 watch? Also, is there any word on when Watch OS 5 will be released? I'm looking forward to listening to you guys on the podcast app. So you can, with great effort, get your uh, books onto your watch. But it requires stripping the copy protection off. So Audible has copy protection so that they'll only play back in Audible. And that's the publishers require that, of course. Uh, and uh, if that's the case, until Audible says, well, you can transfer your watch, you can't. So what you have to do is you have to turn them into MP3s. And actually what you really want to turn them into is, I think, M4Bs, which are book format. Um, and I'm not going to tell you how to do that, but there are ways to strip out copy protection uh, and turn them into something that can be put moved to your watch by iTunes as if it were music. The key is don't make it a, a standard uh, M4A because, which is that that's the AAC standard that uh, Apple uses in iTunes. Make it an M4B because that will pick up where you left off, and that's the biggest thing with a book. With songs, you always want to begin at the beginning, right? You don't want to begin in the middle. With a book, you always want to begin where you left off, and there is that feature. So you'll you'll so the two steps you're going to need, and one you'll have to figure out on your own is how to remove copy protection from the Audible books, put them in your iTunes. And step two is make sure that you've indicated, and you can do this actually in the info, that this is a book, a spoken word, and that way it'll treat it properly. And I presume the watch will treat it properly. I've not done this, um, that, so that you will pick up where you left off. That's a. I mean, I really would love that. And let's just just put in a feature request to Audible. I think that's something they should do. They've really. You know, for a while, they didn't do a lot with their app. And then in the last year or two, and we should mention Audible as a sponsor, but in the last year or two, they've added a lot of nice features mm -hmm. to their app, including, uh, you know, basically podcasts and, and short form content. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of stuff you would want to put on your watch and listen to. So maybe that's on their list. We have so many more questions. I'm going to get to all of them eventually. Mm. But now we have to, we get to thank Qualcomm mm. for sponsoring this show. I love show. this. This is so subversive of Qualcomm. <laughs> uh, they, they said, you know, we want to tell uh, people who watch iOS today, there might be another way. <laughs> There's no other way. There might be another there way. It's Qualcomm way. Snapdragon. Of course, you can't get it on an iPhone. But you may want it because it is fast. No one wants to wait. Everybody wants more speed, whether it's in line, in traffic, or downloading that music or audio book. How can you get faster data speeds even without switching carriers? You need the right phone. Ookla, you know, speedtest.net, they, uh, mm -hmm. they collected over a million real-world results from their speed test app uh, in uh, the second quarter of 2018. So January, February, March. April, May, June 2018. From AT&T and T-Mobile. Android phones with Snapdragon 845 from Qualcomm Technologies had up to 192% faster data speed than, oh, I don't know, some non-Android phone with an Intel modem. Wonder where they got that. <laughs> 192, that's almost twice as fast. And all the new Android flagship phones have Snapdragon 845 in them. It's, a, it's remarkable that Note 9, man, is that fast. It is engineered, too, with powerful features that let you do even more with your phone, like immersive AR and VR. Uh, partly that's because of the third-generation Qualcomm Hexagon 685. It's a DSP, a digital signal processor, that does a lot of important things like AI processing. It's what makes the cameras so good on many of these phones. It's not the lens, but this, the back-end processing they're doing with this Qualcomm chip. Voice recognition. Uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, and, of course, gaming experiences. All are better with the Qualcomm Hexagon A685. And Qualcomm has built in a new secure processing unit. That's where fingerprints and iris and face recognition is stored, keeping precious data out of prying eyes. That's really important. It's energy efficient, engineered for all-day battery life, and you will love the Qualcomm Quick Charge. It can charge you up to about 50% charge about half charged in 15 minutes. So it goes all day. And if you, you know, you get home and you want to go out at night, boom, plug it in while you wash your face and boom, you're back up. But the best part is that 192% faster data. Check out all the data for yourself at qualcom.com slash twit. Then upgrade your data speeds with a phone powered by Snapdragon 845. Qualcom.com slash twit. We thank Qualcomm for their support.
We do have a lot of people that use Android phones and iPads, or they just yeah. enjoy watching us and use an Android phone. And I use judge. an Android phone. We don't judge. I think it's very funny. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, Somebody in the chat room is saying, continuity dropped the ball. No, no, no. Qualcomm wanted to be on iOS today. They also, I think, are on Mac Break Weekly because they wanted to let people know there's another way. Now, what these tags are, are these still on if you don't apps? like them. Okay. These are handmade in Petaluma. They're called Just for Fun. <laughs> and Lisa, darling Lisa, snuck them into my car. Oh, this morning? This They're morning. so cute. She, she, uh, I know where she got them because uh, there's a shop in Petaluma. And I was in there and I said, oh, I, I would really love these. They'd be so fun for iOS today. And I didn't get them. And John, would you uh, take a picture with my phone too? Because I want to send Lisa a picture. You know, he could just send you that picture from me. That's all right. He can do it with my phone too. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, like airdrop, something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm a wolf, you're a sheep. What do you think that means? <laughs> We're uh, wearing these hats for, well, because they're cute, but you, why else? Uh, well, because um, we are talking about our favorite apps. <laughs> these are our these app are our favorite caps. Caps. And I may be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Who knows? Yeah, I'm not messing around with you. I'll tell you that right now. Um for my favorite app of the week, it just came out. So I have only been using it Brand um, new. since last night. And I, got, I have to thank uh, Patrick Delahanty for recommending Donut County. Do not county. Donut Don't County. Don't County. Um, it is a game from Annapurna Interactive, which is a movie studio. Annapurna Interactive. Um, they I've made heard her. Of them. Yeah. Um, should I start at the beginning? What do you think? Yeah. Okay. Let me start at the beginning. Okay. This is a game. Uh, let's quit. And I want to quit the game. My progress has been autosaved. It's interesting that this, a movie company is making a I game. Know. Well, it was made, it was picked up. It was an independent developer, oh, Ben and Esposito. Just, and then they, you know, they bankrolled it. Not surprised, really. I mean, this is this is the next, this, the, this is the next big thing. There's more money in games than there is in movies, right? Um, have you ever played Whole I.O., the game Whole I.O., where you're a hole swallowing up the world? No. Okay. Is this, that based on, is this a um, sequel? It's kind of, well, this, you are a hole. A donut so hole? You are a hole, just a hole. You're any kind of hole, any kind of hole. Hole, H-O-L-E, hole? Yes. So okay. this is Ben Esposito as a developer. And this we're is kind of cool house. looking. Okay. And I want to play this already. I love how it looks. When are you coming looks. into work? Board. I can either respond with a duck quacking or I can reply um, any other way. And then she says, quiet, BK, I'm dead. I've died. What? Please have some respect. Oh, this is grim. Oh, no. It's just like, I've died. Like a kid oh. would say, I'm dead. I'm Why dead. are you dead? The honking man woke me up again. And then I'll respond with a little honk. And then the response is about honk back. And then I'll reply, at the honk of dawn. Honking unbelievable. Don't worry. I'll revenge you. When does this get fun? Be careful, dude. It is fun. <laughs> this guy really honks. Yeah, whatever. Come to the donut shop. Oh, it's, good. Finally. Stop feeding your dog bread. He needs bread to live. You should read the part of the raccoon. This sounds He's random. He's a certified loaf. Okay. 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 So now I can press X and oh, I can God. pull the. <laughs> that was, that donut was all the horrible aside. conversations I've ever had. Let's what? just admit that I am a. I find games appealing What's that are going different. On? Okay. So I'm the hole. Oh. And I have to go around and collect things in the hole. There I go. Oh, I that's fun. Phone. And so all I, of that was just prelude to nothing. Yes, it's just yeah. part of the story. So as I collect things in my hole, I my hole becomes bigger. Oh. Now you can swallow the the letters. I well, I want to try. You to couldn't get them at first. Well, I want to. We're not... trying to get that bike. Yeah. Oh my God, you need more. You need more stuff. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, 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 I didn't get the bike. oh! Get the fence. Oh yeah, the thank you. Yeah, that'll trees, help you get the bike. And I'm gonna knock him over. Oh, can, oh, oh, oh! I got all this, this stuff. This is fun. I'm oh, I'm, get the oh, I'm getting this for the airplane. Does this need a constant internet connection? Because I'm looking for games I can play. In um, the that's air. a really good question. I bet it doesn't. Probably not. Oh, Ooh. I want the bike. Oh, Ooh. get some more fences. Okay. Oh, you, I forgot these fences yeah, over yeah. here. And now you can get the bike. Time. Watch this. Oh, ah, you it. swallowed him. <laughs> so now we go back to the donut shop. I'm sorry, that was evil. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're the point is. To, okay, I'm gonna go to the donut shop. <laughs> okay, this is crazy in. fun. I don't know. Now it's... I'm the trash panda raccoon. Dude, the honking stop. Did you actually do something to the honking Oh, you're man? the person he was talking to. Okay. 
Yeah, don't worry about him. I just delivered him a donut. Uh, okay. How much of this do you have to do? Uh, all of it. I mean, you don't have to quack <laughs> like oh, I do. But... I noticed, though, the, the, there's no X yet, so you have to no, do a little bit of it. this. Hey, okay. guess what? I'm level nine now. Oh, gosh, she's responding. This, this part they wow. should leave out. I don't get this part. This is part of the story. How is this helping? You don't get it, Mira. At level 10, I earned my quadcopter. Oh, right. So this, is, this is just going to be me pressing reply as fast as <laughs> okay. I can. Okay. We're going to buzz around like kings. Just keep honking. Honk. <laughs> okay. Oh, finally. <laughs> I don't, that, okay, six weeks later. Okay. Six <laughs> that's a weeks lot of texting. Later. I want more holes. No. I want to eat more stuff. You need the whole context. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mira. How? See, we see the broken cob quadcopter. How could you smash my quadcopter? And Mira says... Can I just have a game that e has a hole that eats things? If you're a man, yeah. <laughs> Who cares about your stupid quadcopter? Here comes Mira. I like her bangs. How could you destroy the entire town, Leo? Now, 999 feet below Donut County. <laughs> And there they are, sitting There's around a, a fire. Fire. I've never destroyed anything. I'm kind. Oh, OMG! What? You use that stupid app to open up holes all over town, and now we're all stuck underground. Everything here looks fine to me, <laughs> except my quadcopter. I'm the victim. And then Mira's thinking, dot dot dot. Will someone back me up here? I, I like games with a story. <laughs> it's if you, obvious. You, you should do. just play Hole IO because that's just a hole swallowing thing. There's a game called Hole IO. Yeah, Hole .io. That's all you do is swallow things. I, yeah, I think Good. so. Good. No raccoons. And my. There's an awful lot of this. It's just you typing a button. You're not even doing anything. You're texting. You're enjoying no, the you're... conversation. Tap anywhere to deploy hole. Oh, thank God! Finally. Okay. And so now I'm going to Now you can eat that weed and that brick. This might get tiresome after a while, right? It doesn't. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now I need to knock over that um, coffee cup. So the trick here is we're, we're trying to get bigger and bigger so we can affect larger objects. We got right. the vase. Now you got the cube. Now you... Okay. Oh, oh well, you knocked it over you, and you, you ate it. You got to swallow things in certain order. Right. Right? Or else... That's really just basically that's the fundamental... I don't know how to get that cube. We'll keep eating things till there's nothing left. Okay. <sighs> I could play this game all day. By the way. So there's a there's a thing called whole, it's like a website called Whole IO. Well, the game it's Whole IO. No, oh, don't swallow me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm open this door. I think have have I shown enough? Cause I can keep playing. No, oh, okay. Do you want me to show you Whole IO? Because I also have that. So this okay. is for... Okay. So if you want social interaction... Yeah. Get the uh, the donut shop. Donut County. And if you just want to swallow things, get hole.io. Yeah. I believe that there's a Holy story... Up. More of a story behind uh, Donut County. Like it started as a meme or something. I'm not sure. But it's for Oh, me. this sounds like it would be like this is a meme. Yeah. Yeah. But it to me, it is a fun game. And you don't have to know the meme. So my app cap. <laughs> what? Your what? <laughs> so my app cap. Okay. Well, is uh, okay. yours is a time waster. No. What? Mine is a time saver. Okay. It's well, actually an update to an app we've mentioned. I think we've mentioned before. If not, we should have. Omni Focus. The Omni Group does the best apps. And one of the reasons I thought about this is because uh, our friend Sal Segoyan was in for triangulation, and he has been working with the Omni Group folks on all the Omni apps, including Omni Focus, to make them more automatable, to make them work better with workflow and eventually Apple shortcuts. Omni Focus is a to-do list on steroids. Even the cost is on steroids. There's a free trial. You get a two-week trial with all the features of Standard and Pro. But if you want to unlock standard, it's $40. If you want to unlock pro, it's $60. Now, if you've bought it in the past, this is version three of OmniFocus. I'm going to begin the free trial. If you've bought it in the past, 
uh, you will be able to get an inexpensive upgrade. And I think I did, so I should and all that. Let's. Uh, my trial has begun. Let's start with Pro. Pro adds a lot of features. One of the reasons I was happy to see that dispatch email program you talked about is it can dispatch directly into OmniFocus. So if you do use email as a way to trigger to-dos, this is a great choice. Here we have a choice, and I love it. This is The Omni Group is a longtime developer for Macintosh and iOS. Very thoughtful, really good. And here's an example. Would you like to keep your data in the cloud? Or... Would you like to keep it only on this device? If you really want to keep it private, you can. I'm going to use the cloud. Even here, you get a choice. Not of iCloud, by the way. Uh, and this really is more for historic reasons. I think iCloud now does a pretty good job of syncing. But in the early days, it really was unreliable. So Omni set up its own sync service. That's free. That's part of the price. So go ahead and use that. Um, oh, shoot. Now I have to sign up for a new account and all of that stuff. I don't know if I want to do that. I... <laughs> I think that, I wonder if I can use this without doing anything. Maybe if I just say, don't sync for right now. That's what I'll do. Now I'll show you. There is so much in here. I eventually will want to sync because there's OmniFocus for the desktop on the Macintosh and for the phone too. And you want to be able to sync because you want to be able to keep everything that you're keeping track of available everywhere you go. This is getting things done methodology. I don't know if you're aware of Dave Allen's very powerful system but one of the keys to it is don't keep anything in your brain. Mm. Whenever you need to do something, you want to commit to doing something, uh, you should dump it out into a trusted inbox. Mm -hmm. And so it all starts with the inbox. Any good GTD solution will have a very quick, fast way to dump stuff into it. In fact, one of the things I love about this is this works with drafts. I use drafts, as you know, on my Apple Watch to quickly make notes about appointments, things I have to do, and so forth. You can then send drafts right into OmniFocus. So if you use OmniFocus as a to-do list, it's very powerful. There's a basic to-do list functionality. You know, you can check the boxes. You can delete by swiping. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You can. <laughs> you like that, huh? I like the swiping. You I like, you're a I swiper. I like swiping. I like keeping nothing in my brain. I yeah. never keep anything in my yeah. brain. What you can do also, which is kind of interesting, is select multiple items to put them together or delete them or do something with them. Notice we have lots of additional features. This is all from getting things done technology. Uh, the Everything goes into the inbox, but then you process stuff in the inbox by either you really only have a few things you can do. Doing it is the best one. If it's going to take you uh, two minutes or less to do it, just do it. Get it out of the way. Uh, if not, then you might want to assign it to a, a timeline a project, or delegate it. Give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Give it to Megan to do. That's what I always do. Say, Megan, would you do this? Mm -hmm. So all of these tools, this is, if you look at it, you can see it's a little complicated. You'll quickly get used to uh, the ability to quickly process stuff, organize it. I think for you, I know you love your bullet journal. Mm -hmm. This is much like a bullet journal, but it's a digital bullet journal. And, and so here's flagging. Here's projects. You can create as many projects as you need to organize. Projects can also be broken down into additional tasks, as you can see here. Uh, that makes it really easy to assign tasks to projects. I love the nearby feature because this knows where you are, right? Uh, even the iPad without GPS knows roughly where you are. So when you get to work, for instance, stuff that's assigned for work, you can do at work. But you don't have to see the stuff you can't do at work, right? The stuff you do at home is kind of hidden away. Do the stuff you can do, the stuff that's nearby. So the nearby uh, tag is great. Of course, you've got a, a taxonomy system that allows you to tags not only location but people. I can say whenever I'm you know, with Megan, these are the things I need to do. Energy level, like this is one that's going to take a lot of work cleaning the garage. Uh, yeah. My energy level's low. I don't even want to see those. Priority. Really important in, in any getting things done methodology to understand there's external priorities and there's internal priorities. There's the stuff you care about that you want to do. That's an internal priority. There's the stuff the boss says you have to do. And those are different kinds of priorities. You shouldn't assume that just because you know, there's some external force saying, oh, you got to do this, that it is the most important thing to do. You really have to look at what's most important to you. This helps you do that as well. 
So tags are great. You can see you're going to love this. It has all these locations, home, office, device, computer, online. There's stuff I can only do when I'm doing email. So I can assign things to the email. And now I'm going to be, email. you have your hour of email in the morning. Mm -hmm. You could have that email tag handle all of that for you. Reviewing is also important. Once you dump it into the inbox, once a week, you want to review it, assign it, process it to make sure that you're on track. Take a look at what what pro, you know, projects you have going, if you're making uh, uh, progress there, if something's no longer relevant or it's done, you can delete it. So this is very important, and this has a very good review function. It goes along with this sweep function where you sweep through the stuff. This is the power tool for getting things done. You don't have to use the getting things done methodology with it, but it's really honestly designed for that. Um, we could take a look real quickly at what you get with standard. You get... For $40, everything that you, you know, editing and all the things I just showed you. But the pro version gives you a, a lot more uh, that you can do. This is task management, by the way, for Mac as well. So you might want to look at the features that are available in the Mac. So versus, that price is for the Mac too? Or what if, if you buy it for the Mac, how much does it cost? Um, oh. A little more expensive. You do have to buy it separately. So that's important that's to understand. What? Well, how much do you want to get things done? That's my question to you. Done. Obviously, you don't care. <laughs> Obviously. Siri captures nice. Uh, the swiping oh, yeah. that you like, multitasking, which means you can swipe it to the side and have it going on while you're doing something else. I do that a lot uh, because if I, if well, I should say this. If I ever did anything, I would do that a lot. Um, Apple <laughs> script support. <laughs> True. No, but this, if I ever do anything, this is what I'll use to do it. Okay. I don't plan to do anything, but if I were, this is what I would do. Okay. So for those of you who have to do things, OmniFocus is a very powerful tool. OmniFocus 3 came out last month. It's a big, big revision, lots of new stuff. And I want to mention, if you use it on the Macintosh, that Apple Script support is fantastic. You can automate so much stuff. And I, I think the workflow support, I, I think, is coming soon. So watch for that so that you can use it with uh, iOS 12. That's it for the wolf. And the sheep. And iOS today. Megan at TV, tell uh, to tell Leo anything. <laughs> That's where you go. <laughs> we should have just, you should have a folder. Yeah. The, the Leo yeah. folder. I, sh yeah, I should, yeah. I can make it go directly in there. The words tell out. Leo. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to start doing that after, now. After you put it in the folder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you want to be uh, part of the show, we love getting questions. Megan at TV. You can also be in studio. We love having people in the studio. Just email tickets at twit.tv or watch the live stream at twit.tv slash live. If you're doing that, please join us in the chat room, irc.twit.tv. Somebody's saying we need to create a new address. Tell Leo at twit.tv. Mm -hmm. Maybe we will. <laughs> Makes it easier for me to ignore. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to watch live or listen live, though, if uh, your schedule is a little busy. And I wouldn't blame you because we do this Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern. Uh, what is that, uh, 1600 UTC. If you can't be around in the middle of the day because you got stuff to do, watch On Demand. Just download a copy from our website, twit.tv slash iOS, or better yet, subscribe in your favorite podcast app. We have audio and video versions. Pick the one that, that fits your needs. And then uh, if you subscribe, you'll have it uh, available to you late uh, Tuesday afternoon. Uh, well, a few hours after the show ends. If we do it at 1600, maybe like by 2000 UTC. Depends on how many things we have to cut out that you said. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. I was today. Bye bye.